This is essentially the same slide that we ended our last class with. We talked about quotients and remainders for the integers. And I ask you the question, is this statement obvious or does it require an explanation or a proof? And of course, with this background discussion about induction, you're supposed to say, yes, that's an assertion about positive integers, and so that requires a, a proof. And this one is a little bit more complicated because it's a statement which has a quantifier inside it. So the statement is Sn for all m, for all other integers m, there's a quotient q and a remainder r with the quotient greater than or equal to 0 and the remainder somewhere between 0 but less than m so that n is qm plus r. Okay, so now let's prove this. So we first take the statement S1. Now, this is the subtlety that we moved up in the complexity of this conversation because proving S1 is not just doing one statement like showing 1 squared equals 1 anymore because statement 1 has in it a quantifier for all m. So we're actually doing infinitely many things just to do the base case. All right, but we can do them in two steps. So let's look at the case when n is 1. And now we say if m is 1, then I can say 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 0. So in other words, the quotient is 1 and the remainder is 0. And that works. But now, if m is bigger than 1, I don't care what the value of m is, if it's bigger than 1, then n is quotient 0 times m plus remainder 1. And now the remainder is smaller than q, smaller than, than m. So those two lines together take care of the case when n is 1. So, so the statement S1 is true. Now we assume SK is true, and now we want to prove that SK plus 1 is true. What is statement SK plus 1? You can always write K plus 1 in the form of QM plus a remainder. All right, so I start with the fact that I can write K as QM plus R. Then add 1 to both sides. Then I have k plus 1 is qm plus r plus 1. Well, I'm done unless the r plus 1 is too big. How can it be too big? It's not less than m anymore. Well, how can you go from smaller than m to bigger than m by adding 1? You can't. You can only go from smaller than m to equals m. So you're done unless r plus 1 equals m. But if r plus 1 equals m, you change your value of q by 1. Now, k plus 1 is q plus 1 times m plus remainder 0. Done. So that's, that's induction for adults because it has a quantifier that you carry along. The other is induction for children. So long division is actually a little bit more complicated than your third grade teacher told you. OK, now let's apply that to a classic problem involving find is finding greatest common divisors. The problem is, if I give you two positive integers, and I'll always give them to you with the bigger of the two first, or at least I'll, I won't give you the smaller one first, find a greatest common divisor. Well, here's a, here's a program that will always find the greatest common divisor. So you input the two integers n and m, and, and this code is assuming that n is greater than or equal to m. And you have a test. Your test is got it. Do you have it or not? Do you got it? Well, we're going to start with got it being 0. Then we're going to have a, a candidate answer. So the answer is going to be m. 
And now, while the got it is zero, while you don't know the answer, do the following loop. Take n and divide it by the answer and see if you get residue class zero. And if you get residue class zero, then you know the answer is the answer. So change the got it to be one. And if you don't get it, the answer should be reduced by one. And you keep going until your got it switches to one and you return the answer. So if I want to find the greatest common divisor of 12 and 18, what do I do? I take 12 and divide it into 18 and ask whether I get a remainder of 0. The answer is no. So what do I do? I divide it by 11. I ask whether I get a remainder of 0. The answer is no. I divide it by 10. Do I get a remainder of 0? No. I divide it by 9. I get a remainder No. 8. No. 7. No. 6. Yes. Stop. Answer is 6. Tedious. But unfailing. Is it clear what, what I'm saying that this stupid but highly effective algorithm is? Imagine trying to compute the greatest common divisor of those two numbers using that strategy. You would have to Start with that bottom number, which I won't even attempt to read, and ask, if you divide it into the first one, do you get a remainder of zero? And if you don't, which you won't, you do, decrease it by one and do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And I comment that no computer on the planet will solve this problem using that method. It's too slow. It's too long. But just for fun, and I made these numbers up. I just absolutely tap, 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 tap like this on my keyboard. So then I, I Maple has a GCD function. So I say, well, what, what, let me just ask Maple to. I, I really didn't know whether Maple would will do this quickly. So I did. And the syntax for, uh, by, by the way, if you do these problems with Maple, the syntax for GCD is just GCD parentheses, number, comma, number, close parentheses, semicolon. Close the line with a semicolon, hit carriage return. And so I, I did that. And it said to me, in less than a second, I, you know, I, I went carriage return, and, and, and there was the answer. One. So the two numbers are relatively prime. If you had done the first algorithm, you would have gotten no, 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 all the way down to one. And when you got to one, you wouldn't even have to do the arithmetic. But that's how long it would take. Maple did it in less than a second. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Now, how did Maple do it? That's what we're about to see. 